Counterbalancing. Counterbalancing. So regular counterbalancing, I'll, I'll just ramp it up. I know you specifically asked mainly reverse counterbalancing, but since you brought since since you brought it up, I'm going to do it all. I'm going to do it all. OK, so I have uh, my independent variable uh, has uh, conditions A, B, C and D. So at four levels, OK. Four levels. So if we gave everybody the same order, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, we're going to end up with a uh, carryover or order effects. And that's a sad panda. Okay. <clears throat> so to fix this to f to f excuse you microphone come with me thank you so to fix this fix it we're going to need to do some counterbalancing so to do regular counterbalancing you take the number of levels we'll call x okay actually you know what I take that back. I don't want it to be X. I actually want it to be K since that's the what we've been using. So K, K, take the number. So uh, full counterbalancing. <clears throat> and you do K factorial. OK, so I have four conditions up here. So if I take this, that'd be 4 factorial. 4 factorial is 24, right? 4 factorial equals 24. Don't forget that exclamation point means factorial. And it's not the same factorial as what we've been talking about in class. I'm sorry I didn't make up these words. I, 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 say, I say that every time. I say I've been teaching research methods for... Seven years now, and every single time, I have to say I apologize. The nomenclature people effed up somewhere. Okay, so I have twenty-four possible combinations of A, B, C, and D. Okay, so that's A, B, C, D. That's B, A, C, D. That's uh, A, C, B, D, and then so on and so forth, right? To some other B, let me do it backwards to signify the end, okay? So this is 1, 2, 3, 24, D, C, B, A, okay? 24 combinations of the letters A, B, C, D. So that's full counterbalancing. That's a lot. That's a lot of different conditions are a lot of different orders for these conditions, but it completely 100% removes carryover or order effects. <coughs> and that's really what you're looking for. But a lot of the times it's not practical. OK, so because you'd have to have at least 24 participants. <clears throat> 24 people no that doesn't seem like a lot it, it is it is a within subject design so you're getting more power uh, to detect effects between a b c and d than you would if this was a fully between subject design but you wouldn't need counterbalancing for a between subject design so you need at least 24 participants here um <clears throat> for these four conditions to have the full counterbalancing lots of times Especially if you have like uh, with, with four conditions, four levels of the independent variable, it's really difficult um, to even do this another set of times where more than one person gets each order. So <clears throat> you really have to double your uh, K factorial or 
do something else. Okay. So an additional time, uh, an additional kind of counterbalancing. So that was number one. Number two is partial counterbalancing. Counterbalancing. <clears throat> which is making a subset by utilizing what are called Latin squares. Now, Latin squares are used in a lot of different things. But in this case, what we're going to do is with four conditions. So I have four levels, right? K equals four levels. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a K by K matrix. K by K. OK, OK, K, K. So let's do the best I can with this. Let's do a K by. Oh, boy, it's already starting off very poorly. Oh. Ah! Cool. Cool, cool, cool. I did not put these in the right place. I did not do that well at all. Holy crap. I'm trying over here. <laughs> I was doing thirds instead of quarters here. Somebody say quarters. So <clears throat> we've got my K by K matrix. I'm going to put my A's on the diagonal or on the one diagonal, I should say on the one diagonal. I'm going to put my D's on the other diagonal. So the only thing left for me to do is fill in my B's and C's. But the B's and C's are reciprocal of each other, okay? Or mirrored, I should say. So that B goes there, and this B goes here. And if that C goes there, then that C goes there. You can see that that's the reverse, obviously, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. And now I just need two more B's and C's. So how about I put a B here and a B here? And a C here and a C here. Boom. I now only have four counterbalance uh, sequences. <clears throat> Hell yeah. OK, now. You could do this, so even with 24 people, so if I had 24 people, 24 participants, I now get to run this six different times, right? Six times four is 24. <clears throat> so if I had 24 participants, instead of one running one person through one combination of my levels, I'm going to run uh, six people per one of these four orders, OK? And this hits all of the order. Uh, this hits all of uh, the places where A, B, C and D can be in the orders. OK, so A is in the first spot in this sequence. A is in the second spot in this sequence. A is in the second spot or third spot in this sequence. A is in the fourth spot in this sequence. Okay, that's all. Those are the only places A can be if you're only measuring once. Okay. Now, what if you wanted to measure uh, multiple times? Well, this is where you need to do the uh, reverse or block randomization counterbalancing. So, reverse uh, is taking. Oops. Counterbalancing. I don't know why I keep saying that. I just like it. <clears throat> so this is where I take number one up here. Full counterbalancing or partial counterbalancing. It really all depends on how many times you are reversing um, how many times you are. So we have K equals four. Right, right. A, B, C, D. So for reverse counterbalancing, I'm going to do participant one, participant two, participant three, participant four, so on and so forth. OK, they're going to get sequence A, B, C, D. 
And then they're going to, since I want to get them uh, measured at least one more time, D, C, B, A. And then, okay, I'm going to just do B, A, D, C for participant two. Then they're going to do C again, D, A, B. Okay. Look, there it is. There's C, D, A, B. So participant three is going to get C, D, A, B. And then they're going to reverse that and do, do B, A, D, C. Bad C. It's a bad C. Okay. And then participant four is going to do D, C, B, A. And then they're going to do A, B, C, D. Huzzah. So that's reverse counterbalancing. And you would do this if you were, so this is if um, I'm measuring two times, two measure. Now, if I do three measure, I just reverse it one more time. So they do A, B, C, D. This is uh, B, A, D, C. This is C, D, A, B. And this is D, C, B, A. If I wanted to do a fourth measure, then I reverse it again. So I'm just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth on whatever sequence that they're doing. Okay. Uh, and then so on and so forth. However many measurements I'm getting for that person. Okay. And then the last one that I talked about is number four is um, counterbalancing with block randomization. Now, block randomization, we talked about for independent group designs between subject designs. This is to make sure you end up with equal groups. So, you know, in my small examples here, I have very few people, right? I'm talking about four participants here. Now, imagine you had like 200 participants, but you wanted to make sure that you're getting rid of all counterbalancing issues. Or, um, sorry, order effect issues. So counterbalancing with block randomization would make sure, okay, well, let's take my example here of my Latin square, my K by K matrix. So I'm going to use this, okay? <clears throat> let's bring it down here. I'm not going to rewrite it. But if we say, okay, block randomization, block one, and I want to measure, let's see, for example, three measurements. Because block randomization is really used for more than one measurement, right? So I'm going to do th three measurements. Block one, block two, and uh, let's do block three here. So block one, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to randomly flip a coin. Actually, let's do block four. Uh, I'm going to randomly flip a coin. Well, not flip a coin, sorry. Random number generator between one and four. And that's going to tell me, OK, which of these four am I starting with? So let's just say, oh, random number generator came up with uh, uh, row three. OK, so that's going to be C, D, A, B. OK, I'm not going to do the three, uh, three other measurements just yet. I'm going to set up my blocks first. So because that one came up, now I have one fewer degree of freedom. OK, degrees of freedom. The sequences are n minus one, however many blocks you have or however many sequences you have, n minus one. So you'll see that, OK, random number generator between um, one and four. And if we get number three again, then we ignore it. OK, so let's say uh, A, B, C, D comes up. OK, great. Now I have two options, two options left. I do a random number generator again, or I flip a coin, whatever, whatever is, whatever floats your random boat. Okay. And I get DCBA. Okay. Well, we have no, no other sequences left to vary on this one. So we're going to do B, what is it? <laughs> uh, BADC. Okay. So these are my blocks now. <coughs> And I'm going to do this again for measurement two. Okay. By, uh, by stroke of randomness, I get uh, B, A, D, C. And then I do it again. Um, and I get a stroke of randomness and D, C, B, A. 
I get a, a stroke of randomness and I get C D A B and then A B C D. Etc. etc. And if I do this a third time, and if I say, okay, let's see here. Let's randomly choose. Oh, I end up with a BADC again. Okay, that's fine. Uh, what happens here? Well, I get an ABCD. That's fine. And then over here, I get, uh, uh, what do I have? A, B, A, C, D, B, A, B. Oh, I got the same one again. Well, that was random, so that's fine. And then I have nothing else to vary here, so it's DCBA. And there you go. Measurement one, two, and three. That's block randomization in counterbalancing. <laughs>